Okay. All right, let's get right to it then. We're all ready to go, Nathan? We're set? Perfect. All right, so what is social engineering? Social engineering is the art of manipulation, influencing, or deceiving you in order to gain control over your computer system. Now, this is a very important concept because oftentimes security can be complex. It can be um, built out of many layers. It can be hardware, software, firewalls, um, malware detection software which can be really, really hard to get through or bypass. However, what's easy is to trick someone to do something that you want in order to get information out of them. So always remember the weakest link in any system would be the human factor, the user. I can always get to someone that's a little less aware, a little less professional, uh, doesn't go by the rules and try to influence them in, in some way, which we'll discuss the many ways that we can do that to get sensitive information, maybe financial information, maybe actual physical device uh, by pretending to be someone that you're not. Uh, that would be the easiest thing to do oftentimes as much as uh, we all love and dabble with actual hacking and Linux and all the different um, systems that we use to do that. Sometimes the easiest and the, the simplest thing to do is to actually to, to trick a person. It takes the least amount of resources and time. And uh, we'll actually see it right here. The attackers actually go for the low-hanging fruits, which are human, like we said. They do it in various avenues, just, uh, such as email, uh, social media, and internet. Uh, different trends, uh, if there's different apps that are uh, currently popular, they'll attack those using uh, bogus profiles and such. Obviously, this is misused by criminal groups as well, and we're not going to deal with that. We just, I just want you to be aware of that. Obviously, a lot of these activities are illegal, unless, unless you're doing uh, penetration testing, pen testing, which is fully authorized by your client that actually ordered that service, and we'll give some live examples of that. Exactly. So you guys are already on the chat this early. That's awesome. So let's uh, move on. The most common techniques used by social engineers, the first one is pretexting. And pretexting, basically, we deal with an invented scenario that's actually used uh, to engage a potential victim. And by doing so, we're trying to increase the chances that the victim will bite. Meaning if I know something about Janice that works uh, front desk at the UPS store, I can use that against her to actually create a scenario in which we met before, she helped me out, I know something about her, maybe I know she has a French bulldog, and maybe I use that information to uh, send her a cute attachment about French bulldogs uh, adoption fair or a video that she'll click on and by doing so, she'll give me access to the mainframe or the system that she's on. So pretexting is really laying the foundation for a second or third encounter with that person. By that point in time, their defenses are down and they already know that they, they've seen your name or saw your face before or, your, or the you know, alias that you're using to, to penetrate the system. And by that point in time, it's not like, who is this guy? It's It's more of, Okay, I've seen this person before. I've spoken to him on the phone, maybe I even, you know, got an email from him. So he's probably okay. I'll let him in or I'll let him access my system or anything of that nature. So it's, it's setting the stage for actual uh, access to the, to the system by, by actually, um, you know, presenting yourself as somebody familiar that was there before. Let's go over to phishing. Phishing uh, is actually acquiring sensitive information uh, such as username, uh, passwords, and other credentials, credit card maybe, by masquerading as a trustworthy entity. So I'm sure everybody can open their spam folder right about now and give me about 20 examples of this. You get an email from PayPal asking you to confirm your address or anything like that. Uh, sometimes it's the actual companies, oftentimes not. A quick Google search will give you a lot, a lot of templates of fake um, 
emails like that, phishing emails, a lot of them from big, big companies like uh, PayPal, uh, eBay, Amazon. What are people saying? Can I get? Yeah, you'll have the presentation link in the end, guys. Uh, we'll take care of all that. And also, I believe this is recorded. Yes, it is. So you'll have all that. So, uh, yeah, a simple Google search. And obviously, as a hacker, as a pen tester, as a computer scientist, period, you Google every day. Um, you just find valuable information. And I'll show you some cool examples later that I've used in actual pen testing um, projects that I had. Um, you just get the best stuff for free if you know what you're looking for, especially for, um, you know, Fishing purposes, pretexting purposes. We'll see. Uh, you know, you can use uh, Photoshop to create some assets to make your project uh, seem legit and viable. So the target really thinks that, that it's the actual company, it's the actual person contacting them because all the signs are there, all the logos are there, everything is on point. Let's look at some uh, more common techniques used by social engineers. So we have diversion theft. Uh, simple tricks like dressing up as a UPS, uh, USPS, FedEx, Amazon driver. Uh, you can trick people into making uh, the delivery uh, somewhere other than the intended location. So it's really, really cool. It works really well. It works both ways. So it, it work, works in a way, and I'll show you in the examples. It works, it works in a way that I can be the actual carrier coming into your business or play, uh, you know, office or whatever and then picking up something that I wasn't supposed to pick up just because I'm dressed like the actual courier and I have the ID badge and all that. And it works the way that this actual uh, uh, bullet point says that I can trick the actual company to say, you know what, I ordered this package and I really need it uh, delivered to my office because it's, it's something for my business. And let me just give you the new address. And if you are confident enough, and obviously, a lot of it is if you get the right person on the phone on the other side and they won't doubt you too much. Actually, it works about six or seven times out of 10, in my experience. They'll actually uh, make it happen for you uh, in order to help you. So they'll deliver that package to a place other than the original uh, destination. So that's a really, really good technique. Uh, moving on to uh, spear phishing. Spear phishing is actually a targeted attack using an email on a particular person in the organization or company you're attacking. Uh, and the goal is to actually uh, penetrate uh, their defenses. So again, this is very specific. It requires some recon about the people in the company, which today is super easy to do. Uh, you can totally uh, Google almost about anybody, whether it's LinkedIn, social media, Facebook, Instagram, you name it. Get some piece of information on them uh, and usually uh, you can also get their business information such as email, extension numbers, uh, and use that against them and then contact them via email or otherwise and ask about something very personal that's related to them. And usually they'll warm up to you and, and if they're not super security aware, they'll actually give you more information than what they need to. And by doing that, you gain access to the whole infrastructure and the whole mainframe of the whole company so that's a really effective technique all right let's move on water holing so water holing takes advantage of uh, websites people regularly visit and trust so if i know that joe from amazon and their sales department usually opens his morning by going to uh, ebay and looking at fishing rods, guess what I'm gonna send him as, you know, a, a fishing website or a fishing attempt uh, technique. I'm gonna send him something that's related to 80% off his uh, most searched fishing rods. So he'll click on it, and by doing that, he'll uh, release a malware or activate more like a malware that gives me full access to his system plus the servers and the in the actual network yep fishing rods exactly no pun intended uh that's good so baiting <laughs> baiting uh dangling something in front of a victim so they take action so this can be so many things um guys it's amazing people don't even think about it but 
I'll share something with you I used in actual pen testing uh, a, a scenario that I had. I actually uh, had to gain access to computer system in a certain business, which had about 30 workstations. And most of the people were not uh, secure minded. They were not, you know, very tech savvy. There were maybe three or four people in the whole company that were. So what I did, I invested about 15 to $20 in branded USB drives, little flash drives with the logo of that company. And I'm not going to expose how I actually got them into the facility because I had to use somebody else, but I got them into the facility and I just laid them out. That person laid them out for me in the uh, break room, in the front desk, in a little bowl with some candies and, uh, you know, free USB drives, guys. Who doesn't like uh, USB drives? And people picked them up and 80 or 90 percent of them, the first thing they did was connect into their workstation and see what's on it. And obviously there was nothing on it that they could see, but by that point in time, it was too late because I already deployed a little uh, malware that actually uh, acted, uh, double acted as a keylogger as well and got all their credentials, their passwords, their usernames. Um, the even smarter quote unquote people connected them to their personal machines, which actually gave me, I didn't use it for anything obviously, under the ethics rule, but they gave me uh, all that information from their personal machines. So laptops and such, uh, people ended up taking it home and connecting them to several devices. So moral of the story is if somebody gives you a flash drive, don't use it unless you buy it sealed from a trustworthy source. And even then I would uh, uh, format it and use the proper tools before I plug it into any of my machines, whether it's classified or not. So that's a, a really, a really good technique. Um, let me see what else we have here. Uh, more common techniques, tailgating, gaining access uh, to a building or a perimeter uh, or a protected area by following somebody else. Now, guys, I'm sure a lot of you have done this in real life, uh, regardless of computers or technology, basically, you go to visit a friend in a community and they get those gates, but there's no actual guard there. And there's a car in front of you and the gate goes up and you see it doesn't go down. And you're like, I'm not going to wait here. I'm just going to follow this guy. Right. So you just uh, drive past the gate and you're in. That's pretty much the concept of tailgating. It doesn't have to be with the car. But if we're talking about gaining physical access, it's definitely um a very effective technique. Um, you can do it with uh, key cards, certain businesses or restricted areas that require uh, an ID badge, a work ID badge to get in, whether it's those glass doors that the employee go through or a carousel or anything like that. Sometimes just tailgating after the, the, the guy before you, very, very effective. Uh, it works well if you tailgate uh, after uh, couriers, like we said, like FedEx, um, Amazon, UPS, and such, or any other person that will hold the elevator door open for you, quote unquote. Very, very effective, very, very easy. Moving on to Honey Trap, the next one, which is basically, you know, I'm a guy, so, you know, excuse me, but men are weak and men are not very smart. So, luring men to interact with fictitious, attractive, uh, female online. If you get a really, really beautiful girl to help you out, and I've used this in pen, uh, pen testing scenario, whether you send her physically in, which is a lot better because the, then the effect is maximal, uh, and the person at the front desk or in the IT department is a guy and he sees this beautiful girl and she's, um, you know, working her charms and asking for help. Let me tell you guys, you'd be surprised. Seven or eight times out of ten, it actually works flawlessly. They don't suspect nothing. And um, she gets what she wants, or I get what I want, for that matter. This is actually used. Uh, I didn't share this in the beginning, but I'm also, uh, I have a lot of military experience and federal security experience before I got into uh, IT and computer science. So this is really used by intelligence agencies worldwide to actually... Uh, you know, conduct espionage and collect information 
and trick assets into um, cooperating because they don't suspect, suspect an innocent, beautiful girl. So that's a very effective technique as well. Then we have Rogue. Um, let me see what you guys are writing here. Like, what's even worse, your data is out there, so whatever picture you use is based on your taste. Oh, exactly. And that go, goes back to pretexting, the first thing we discussed. So if I know this person like the blonde blue eyes and he's in a certain type of, you know, taste, I'm going to follow that line. I'm going to send him, uh, you know, a girl that's tailored to that taste to maximize my chances of success. Absolutely. So let's move on to Rogue. Rogue is basically a computer malware that deceives or misleads users into paying for uh, the fake or simulated removal of the malware. So we see that a lot especially with ransomware, uh, you'll uh, you know, click on the wrong link or open the wrong attachment and all of a sudden your senior project is encrypted and you're pretty much uh, in a bad spot or your uh, documents folder is completely encrypted with weird extensions on it. And then you get contacted uh, via email or otherwise saying, okay, if you want this decrypted or if you want your data back, you'll have to pay us this amount of money uh, to get your information back. This is very, very effective. It's happening more and more in the last couple of years, and people are actually paying. I've had to help a lot of customers of mine um, resolve the situations. In some cases, not to get technical, but in some cases, there are decryptors um, that can reverse the process, and in some cases, you have actually no choice other than paying the individual and hoping they'll um, you know, help you out in return. So we see that more and more, and uh, it's very, very effective. Uh, just because encryption and decryption are so complex, uh, the chances of you doing it by yourself with no technical knowledge or basic technical knowledge is slim to none. So attackers really pursue that avenue. Okay, so let's look at some uh, real world examples. So this is a classic phishing example. Um, this is the classic tech, uh, tech, uh, technical support scam. Uh, again, urgency is always a thing. It's always a factor. What do I mean by that? If you display something is urgent, it has to be done right now, people are more likely to cooperate. I know it sounds stupid because a lot of you guys are more security aware or CS uh, people, but trust me, the common user that works in the average company, once he sees urgent or response required, they they react right away. So here we have, uh, you know, uh, supposedly a PayPal template that looks legit with the logo and everything. It says response required. Dear so and so, we emailed you a little while ago to ask for your help resolving an issue with your pay pay PayPal account. Your account is still temporarily limited because we haven't heard from you. And nobody likes to to have a limited PayPal account, right? We need to to use it daily to order things, and it's uh, has sensitive. Uh, uh, financial information. So if I see I have a hold or a, a limited access to my account, I want to see what's going on there. So most likely the average user will respond to this email. So it says, we noticed some unusual login activities on your account. Please check that no one has logged into your account without your permission. To help us with this and to see what you can uh, and can do with your account until the issue is resolved, log into your account and go to the resolution center. As always, if you need help or have any questions, feel free to contact us. We're always here to help. Thank you for being a PayPal customer and sincerely PayPal. So this looks really, really legit. But what happens when the customer clicks on that? He gets redirected to a bogus uh, website that's not the real PayPal. It's a phishing website. And he's going to have uh, you know, text boxes for the password and username. And once he puts his credentials there, I now am the new owner of his credentials and have full access to his PayPal account. And people fall for this type of scam every day. It's probably one of the most common scams. Again, if you want a simple solution, uh, I don't know about other emails. I'm sure it works the same, but I'm going to give example for Gmail. You guys can go into your Gmail right now, and they're very, very effective on their spam filtering. But if you go to your spam folder, you will actually see dozens and dozens of such examples. Uh, e fake emails from PayPal, from Amazon, from Facebook, from whatever. And some of them are smart enough to actually know which websites you visit based on your cookies and then target those uh, 
websites and give you fake templates of those websites. So let's move on to the next real world example, which is the CEO fraud. Now it's called the CEO fraud, but it's actually any authoritative figure in the organization. It can be your uh, CTO, it can be CFO, it can be just your uh, you know, supervisor or manager. And what they do is actually send you an email uh, pretending to be that person and then asking for either financial information or sensitive information or anything that you normally wouldn't give any other employee in the company or obviously somebody from the outside. Um, again, coming from a place of authority, and we can see in this example here, uh, what is the status of the payment? Has it been processed yet? Please inform Jay. And in this case, Jay will be the name of the uh, CEO of the company. And if you're the common Joe, average Joe, that works in one of the departments in the company and you open your email and you see an email from the CEO, well, you're going to address it pretty quickly, let's just say that. Uh, so it's actually taking advantage of authority and urgency in order to get information. And this is really, really, really easy and commonly used. Okay, moving on. Spear phishing example. So again, we're using deep knowledge of the potential victim in order to tar target them. So in this example, we see an email between two employees, very personal, very casual, kind of like the DM you'll send your colleague or coworker in the middle of the day. Hey, are you busy? I need you to uh, process a wire transfer for me today. Let me know when you're free so I can send you the beneficiary details. So in this case, obviously, it's a company that deals with some sort of uh, benefits because they're mentioning a beneficiary. So if I had did my uh, homework and my pretexting, and I know that this person in this company from this, from this specific department is dealing with payouts to beneficiaries, I'm gonna play on that card. And if they reply to one of my emails and I can send them from various spoofed emails to portray as a lot of different uh, people in, from inside the company, if they fall for one of those, and they reply saying, hey, sure, I want you to send me the uh, bank account numbers or the routing numbers. I will then provide those, uh, my actually bank uh, account numbers and routing numbers and have the funds diverted to a completely third party account, which is untraceable and actually you know, succeed in my scheme. So that's very effective and very straightforward. Uh, people fall for this every day, guys. So just, you know, always doubt who's on the other side. It could be anybody, literally, whether it's on the phone, whether it's in person or an email. Uh, they can be confident. They can be knowledgeable. But always do your due diligence and check on your end because it's very easy when you're busy or distracted to do something that will cost your company or organization a lot of money or a lot of sensitive information. Okay, moving on. So, uh, social media, right? It's so creating a bogus profile on social media and impersonating a celebrity or one of your friends or colleagues. So guess what, guys? If Mark Zuckerberg, especially with that photo, sends you a friend request, he doesn't really want to be your friend, right? It's 99.999 chance that he's not really contacting you. So do not accept that friend request. And if Hottie McHahat right there, that little beautiful girl with, uh, you know, especially if she has a, you can clearly see it's not even the same uh, girl in both images. She has no friends, no mutual friends, no history, no posts, and she wants to be your friend. Guess what? You're not that lucky. Most, most chances is somebody's uh, targeting you for a honeypot scheme. Uh, so pay attention to that. A uh, good thing to note here is really look at mutual connections, look at posts, look at personal information. Uh, a lot of times it will say when they join the actual social media platform. So on that aspect, you can see if they joined a week ago, probably not a real person, right? It's really easy to, to identify bogus profiles. Let me see what you guys are writing here. What about a situation where if you even get the credentials, you can't access someone's account because your location or IP is different from the normal commonly used one? Yeah, absolutely. So we have software in place for that. If you have, you know, if it's coming from a different IP or such, 
Absolutely, IP is a, is a, is a that's your identifier that tells that tells me where you're uh, trying to connect from, where your your physical geographical location, right? So absolutely. Um, let me see. You can get the credentials you can, using a VPN. You can get an IP with so that's right. There's VPN. There's other uh, freewares, guys. Free software that will mimic uh, any IP that you want to be a guy from the Google office if I want to. I can actually do that, and I've done similar things in the, in the past. So what you do, you use a VPN or, or similar software that actually uh, spoofs the IP of anywhere in the world. And if you want to reinforce your uh, bogus profile or bogus alias, what you do is get a, a fake caller ID with the number of the actual, let's say in this case, uh, Google office in uh, California and get a, an employee name, but take it one step further, get an employee name and hey, this is Jay from Google with its, with actual Jay's phone number and his IP in California. If anybody cross reference all those three or four factors, they think you're the real deal. Uh, Jose saying you can get an IP address from Google search two or proxies, absolutely guys, Research is free and it's super helpful. You can do all this stuff super low budget or free if you just uh, take your time in uh, GOT. Uh, just Google, Google it. Um, let's move on. Gaining physical access. So I'm gonna share with you a couple of things uh, that were used in past pen testing that I've used or uh, colleagues of mine have shared with me some stories. So really easy, really straightforward, but super, super cool and very effective. Exactly, Newman, for those of you who identify, you get 10 credit points right there. Newman. So everybody loves the, mailman, the mailman, right? Because everybody needs their packages, their letters, whatever, nobody suspects them. He comes at a, you know, same time uh, every day. He's got his uniform, uh, they're, they're, they're federal employees, so nobody even suspects them. Right, so the recon stage would consist of learning the schedule of the delivery route, uh, and actually, you know, if there's anything specific to that route, like the mailman in that route usually has something more than just his shirt and a badge. Uh, he usually, I don't know, he's a fan of a specific type of cargo shorts or a specific type of shoes or anything like that. So you would try to match that. Uh, identically, and if you get questioned, you can always say, oh, we're doubling up the route today, we have a lot of packages, or if you did your uh, due diligence right and you actually know the exact time that the courier gets to that spot, let's say he passes by the office at 2 p.m., guess what I'm going to do tomorrow? Tomorrow I'm going to show up at 1.35, and if anybody doubts who I am, I'm just going to say that the other guy is out for the day and I'm replacing him. And I'm there uh, 30 minutes earlier, an hour early, and I'm going to pick up a package. And by the time they figure out what's going on, I'm already out with that package. So in preparation for this, we would obviously obtain uniforms from online websites such, such as eBay, OfferUp. Guys, you'd be surprised. You go to your local Goodwill. Yes, your local Goodwill. And people have work shirts, work shirts galore there. They have uniforms. They have hats. I even found the uh, badge holders there, and we're talking about a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. Just do a Google search; it's amazing. You you can get legit uniform for exactly field trip to Goodwill. You can get full uniforms for a few dollars online. Some uh, ex employees, I don't know if they're disgruntled or not, are selling their whole inventory. Sometimes several sets, if you care about that, for next to nothing on all the the famous uh, auction sites and secondhand sites. Super easy to get. Uh, card reader, guys, you hop on Amazon, you get yourself a, a, a car uh, a ID maker or reader for 30 to 50 bucks. If you want to invest in a good one, then you just make yourself any ID badge that you want uh, to get the format, just like the, the example shows here. Well, the right one is kind of jokingly shows Newman, but the left one is a real guy. He doesn't have his last name, but that's a real mail carrier. So if I want to get a USPS badge, all I do is I mimic that, use, use Photoshop or other assets you guys want to use for graphics. I put my face on there. I print it out on my handy dandy ID maker. And that's it. I'm a post office worker with no interview. Just like that, I got a job during COVID. 
yay. And the execution stage. Uh, obviously, like I mentioned, you just pick up the packages of expensive, in this case, it was expensive medical items from that facility, uh, which that's that was the actual purpose of me getting hired for that uh, pen testing project to see if I can get my hands on uh, medical equipment. Uh, in that specific instance, the facility was very well guarded because it is a medical facility. So by actually deploying this really, really simple strategy, I didn't have to go in. I had them bring the packages out to me. So that was very, very effective, very, very straightforward, easy to do. Let's move on to the next uh, example. We have FPL, I got the power, right? So the pretexting, uh, we would be informing all the businesses nearby about FPL infrastructure upgrade in the area. So obviously I got my handy dandy shirt. This one is actually from Goodwill, it was $6. And a badge that I've made of this here that was you know, kind enough to donate his identity for my purposes. So after I make my badge and I have my shirt, I'll actually uh, go around and hand out these uh, pen flips, which actually I found online on Google. If you Google FPL service notice or construction notice, <clears throat> you'll get a dozen of templates that you can use. So by doing that, I'm actually preparing everybody in the neighborhood to the fact that come this day, FPL is going to be doing some work in their area. So if I iterate that day after day, maybe for two or three days, Guess what? No business in that area or residential for that matter is depending on your target or who you're trying to pen test. Nobody's going to uh, doubt you. Nobody's going to suspect you. You have the badge, you have the shirt, you have the service notice, and they're expecting FBL work in that area, right? So as we said, as preparation, we obtained the proper uniform and badge. And for the execution stage, we actually managed to gain access to the meter room, which happened to be the server room because that company was zero security focused and they put all their servers in the meter room where all the, the, the power boxes are. So me as an FPL employee, right? Nobody doubted me, nobody checked anything. They didn't even look at my badge. I could have put a Mickey Mouse uh, photo on that badge. Let me into the meter room, had access to the servers and um, yep, IP spoofing, okay. What do you mean by IP spoofing, Claudia? In this context, I mean, I know in general, but in this context, what do you mean? Okay, we'll wait for your response there. Um, but let me see, in this case, that it's not you in the picture, what if they ask to show you a badge? Well, if they ask to see your badge, usually it's they just look at it briefly. There's nothing hectic. And plus, they, these FBL badges at the time, they didn't have holograms or nothing on it. So super low security measures, very easy to forge. Um, yep, Claudia, similar to someone else's IP. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure how it relates to this specific instance, but yeah, ab absolutely. IP spoofing is very, very uh, useful and it's used commonly. So like I said, guys, th these people put their servers in the meter room. As soon as I had access to the meter room, even though I'm not IT related, nothing like that, nothing fancy, uh, they let me into the room. I wasn't supervised. There was no cameras in the room. Um, the server was right there and they were very, very quote unquote sophisticated and they had it posted with the password for the server underneath the keyboard. That is something else you never do. You never do, you never put a post-it with your password under your keyboard because that's not smart, right? Some people just put it plain on the screen, which is amazing to me. Uh, so that's even worse than doing um, password, password or password one, two, three, four or anything like that. Don't put a post-it with any password or credentials anywhere near the system. Awesome. Yeah, you guys like that. All right, let's move on to the next example. Uh, we have... Waste management. Guys, one man's trash is another man's treasure. What do I mean by that? People don't even know how to properly discard things or what they put in the garbage. So for about $4, I purchased this handy dandy waste management vest and a hat, right? And then I learned to schedule the trash pickup route. 
And I know exactly the days of the week. Usually it's twice or three times a week, depending on the company in the area. They come by at a certain time and they pick up the trash. So in preparation, I got myself my uniform, right? And hat and all that. And I think I had a badge as well, but I'm not sure about that because I don't think waste management, but just the managers have a badge and the uh, workers level, they don't have badges that they uh, carry out, expose them. So the execution, we actually managed to get into the trash room, went through a couple of boxes. We did it a couple of times. Uh, wasn't a one-shot one attempt a couple of times, but eventually sensitive documents were obtained that were not uh, shredded. And here's my advice to you. You are going to uh, get a shredder for your personal workstation, wherever you work, because that $30 can save you a lot of grief down the line. Uh, people not shredding their information, it causes tremendous financial damage and you know sensitive information, personal information, credentials, you name it. Patients of information if it's the medical field. And we got lucky in that instance because we all actually also uh, obtained several hard drives that were discarded and were uh, in old machines. And this was like 10 years, uh, 10 year old machines that the office discarded and didn't think about, uh, you know, wiping the hard drive or even extracting the hard drive. My advice to you, never throw away any hard drive. Um, and all, actually taking that a step forward, you can wipe, you can use all these different fancy software that I've used in the past, but the only real way to get rid of information on a hard drive is a hammer. Again, I'm saying the only real way to get an information out of a hard drive is a hammer you can use a drill whatever your favorite power tool is but open that baby up it's usually a couple of torque screws and smash it just smash it because otherwise it is uh reversible uh you guys nothing really truly gets deleted when you delete it uh there are proprietary software that you know overwrites the zeros and ones and all the different sectors and all that but honestly physical damage is the best let me see what you guys are saying here in the chat uh, my mom has taught me since a little document, name and address, shred it completely. Yes, absolutely. I shred everything, even those stupid spam uh, mail uh, offers that I get with my name and address on it, I shred them as well. Um, it's a good habit to have. Just don't keep stuff around with your name, address on it, uh, because I'm, if I'm a typical attacker, I already have two pieces of information about you. And then all I have to do is do a little bit of Googling, get your birth date, maybe you last for your social somehow, and I have your identity and I can go apply for a nice mortgage and upgrade my house just like that, or get a new car or anything like that. So yeah, be very uh, minded of your information. Have you uh, have any of these physical pen testing methods ever gone wrong for you? Um, so here's the key. Gone, I mean, I wouldn't say gone, gone wrong. You can be unsuccessful but that just means you have to try in a different way uh that being said if you approach things prepared and you do your pretexting and all the preliminary stage, stages that we mentioned earlier um you will be successful if you won't be successful you still won't get suspected because you walk in there and you're nice and personable and, and you're smiling and you're confident guys confidence is key i can't even tell you how many jobs i walked into and I was super confident. I didn't know, you know, too much about the company other than what I needed to know. And people just, they don't even second guess you. They're like, hey, sure, let me help you out. Oh, it, it goes as easy as you walk into a place and you have a uniform, let's say the FPL case, right? And you're like, hey, guys, um, I'm just doing a, a work here in the building real quick from FPL. Here's my badge. I just need to go to the bathroom real quick. Do you have a bathroom in here that I can use like, for a second? And the secretary was, sure, let me get you to the bathroom. And she took me all the way to the back of the office. I saw the whole layout of the office, where the CEO room is, where the IT department is. I had full access to open rooms with uh, station workstations, computers that were actually unlocked. And I could access anything I want. I wasn't escorted. She just showed me and pointed out to the bathroom. I went all the way there. And right next to the bathroom was the, the handy-dandy server room, which was also unlocked. So just be confident, and you can actually get, get entrance to almost anywhere. Most people won't second guess you. Let me see. I work in insurance, and we have search tools with names, address. I can get a lot of information. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. 
A lot of these declassified businesses have access to huge databases with driver license numbers and social security numbers, uh, professional certifications, like you mentioned, Jose. Very, very easy, guys. It's, it's easier than you think. I know that the people that are attending this are probably more security minded, but the average Joe out there have no clue. And if you step up to them with a smile and a badge or even a shirt, they, sometimes you don't even need the badge, they'll, they'll just about open any door that you want. So uh, let's, uh, let's continue. Here we have the AT&T example, right? I'm here to make your internet faster. Who doesn't want to hear that? So this works, guys, nine times out of 10, you walk into a, a job and you go to the front desk, especially if it's a younger employee or, you know, fresh out of training, or even if not, if that's not the case, but it just works really, really well. Um, you're like, hey, I'm here to, you know, make your internet faster. Great. It's been, it's been slow all day. I got to get it faster. So in this specific example, pretexting is very, very important, right? So what I'll do is about a week before I even attempt to, uh, you know, contact that business that I'm trying to penetrate, I'm going to be handing out bogus service upgrade notices in, in that target area saying, hey, this is AT&T. We're going to upgrade you uh, to a faster internet. We're going to do so-and-so work in this and this street. And obviously, those templates are available in Google. You can just actually Google AT&T construction notice or upgrade infrastructure notice and you get a whole bunch of templates. If not, and if you want to get fancy, you can use Photoshop uh, for the asset design and all that. It makes it look really legit with all the uh, logos and such. In preparation, obviously, you get a uniform, which is just an AT&T shirt, super basic to get, and a badge. Now, these uh, two individuals here that you see on the slide, these are actual employees of AT&T with their actual names. Where did I get this? Any guesses? Google. Bing, 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 bing. Survey says Google. That's right. So you literally just Google AT&T employee badge or ID badge, and these will come up. And you can see they're, they're matching. I already know how they look like. I already know they have the, the hologram there for security. So I'm going to find my way around that or create something very, very similar. So the, the top employee actually was kind enough to give me the back of the badge. So now I know how the back of the badge looks like as well. So for execution stage, actually, uh, we managed to obtain full access to the server room, modem, and routers. So guys, if I get access to your server, that's, that's pretty bad. If I get access to your routers and modem, that's even worse because now I have access to your whole organization, even if it's not connected to the main server. So you got to be conscious of that. Not every badge is what it seems to be. Again, you walk in there with confidence, they'll open the door for you. Let's move on. Okay, FedEx, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. That's pretty similar to uh, USPS and Fe and. Um, and uh, Amazon and all the other delivery services. Um, this was a sensitive document interception. A lot of people, a lot of businesses send sensitive documents via the FedEx Express envelopes that everybody knows. You've probably gotten a credit card or something the next day delivery in those envelopes. So for the recon stage, again, we learned the schedule of delivery route. In this case, it was FedEx Express route. In preparation, obtain uniform for six or $7 a shirt, badge and I got really useful information about how the badge looks like, uh, front and back. Even the actual holder is sold for, I think, $10 or so. You can see it on the right-hand side there. And for the execution stage, uh, we actually obtained financial documents that were handed right to us because they were expecting a FedEx delivery that they, uh, FedEx Express pick up that day. And we actually got handed the documents without even stepping foot in the actual facility. Okay, moving on. Comcast, same concept as AT&T. Uh, we got a question. Are you contracted independently by businesses to pen test them? How is the pay to our freelance work? Because it seems you can access relatively quickly. Also, what are the solutions to these vulnerabilities from a company standpoint? Okay, great, great question. Uh, so yes, I am uh, contracted independently. Uh, usually, uh, it's uh, word of mouth, meaning I did work for a certain company or certain CEO and they tell their friends and they are shocked 
And they're like, okay, we got to see if that happens in our company as well. So let me call this guy and have him try to infiltrate our, our business. So usually that's how I operate. It's reference. Uh, and you want to keep it that way. And the simple reason is if you advertise your pen tester and you get your word, the word gets out there publicly, then even the common average Joe that works for the company will, can look you up and see what you do and your whole scheme will fail right then and there. So by maintaining it at a CEO or CTO level, you can actually perform these successfully and not get exposed. Uh, for the second part of your question, the pay is really, really good. Um, it varies between the companies, but guys, if you are a pen tester, you are well in the six figures. Yes, if you are a pen tester, you, you're making well in the six figures. Uh, if you, uh, you know, promote yourself and you, you're good at your job and you've been doing it for a while, I've been doing IT for 15 years, I combine that with the physical security, federal security, and my military experience. The combo of those three things give me a, a skill set that allows me to get what I want in more ways than just the technical and just traditional hacking. So yes, it pays very, very well. Uh, solutions for, for, for these vulnerabilities and the company, company standpoint, I'm going to get to that. We're running out of time, so I'm going to rush a little bit through it. I'm going to get to that in a couple of slides and hopefully answer your question, Pedro. Is that cool? Awesome. So uh, back to the Comcast. Very similar to the AT&T. Uh, I actually found this beautiful uh, door tag here on the right-hand side right there. We're installing new fiber in your neighborhood, right? Exciting. Legit from Comcast, made by Comcast. You can find it on Google right now. All you have to do is mess with the proportions a bit, print it on uh, cardboard or something a little bit firmer than paper, and hang it on a bunch of door, door uh, tags on the, um, in the perimeter of the area that you're targeting, whether it's the you know, two or three businesses nearby, just a pretext just to say, hey, we're going to do some work here. You're getting him mentally ready to the idea they're going to see some com uh, Comcast or Xfinity, in this case, people working in the area. So we actually distributed bogus service notices in the target area. In preparation, uh, obtained a handy-dandy uniform and uh, a badge. This is an actual badge of an actual field supervisor from Comcast. Guys, this badge, I mean, Comcast has its faults, but this badge is a disgrace. Can anybody tell me why this badge is a disgrace? Look at it for a second. This is a real badge, by the way, with a real guy. Any ideas? Easy to copy, right? No holograms. No, not even a logo. That Comcast is written in like Word or something, right? Pretty simple, pretty lame, pretty terrible. Just the name, position, and the company name without a, a specific font, nothing. Terrible. To make it even worse, the back of this badge has nothing on it. It's just plain white. So you can make it in about three seconds, even with paint. So um, for the execution stage, managed to gain access to individual workstations and server room, because guess what? When I was done, quote unquote, upgrading your uh, infrastructure to fiber, I just walked into each and every individual office and said, hey, guys, work from Xfinity. Here's my badge. We did some, uh, you know, fiber installation here. We want to test your internet speed. Four companies out of four gave me access to their server room, and four companies out of four gave me access to all the workstations, including CTO, including CEO, to do a speedtest.net, right? I mean, come on. That's, that's a crime right there. So you walk in there, you're confident, and you get what you want. Yep. Moving on. Uh, yay, Amazon delivery. Everybody loves Amazon because it's all your goodies from Prime. So this vest is about $3 at Goodwill, right? Pick that one up. And just to do an overkill, I didn't have to because nobody even asked to, but I got this Amazon Flex badge, which looks pretty legit. I got front and back. Super easy to forge. Nobody will scan your barcode. You just need your name, whether you're an independent contractor or work for Amazon, there's different badges. But this, this, there's actually, this, this photo is from an actually uh, a company that will make it for you. So if you don't want to go through the hassle of buying your ID maker or badge maker or printer, for a couple of dollars, you can actually um, get that and you have your credentials. So for the recon, again, very similar. You learn the schedule of the delivery route. 
for the preparation, you obtain the uh, proper equipment, which is this. And actually, for that project, I rented a white, uh, a white van as well. That was like $30 a day or something like that. And you show up with a van, this vest and a badge, and you're the Amazon guy. Nobody will, you know, nobody will doubt you. For the execution, we actually managed to gain access to a secure perimeter. So this perimeter was um, a perimeter with um, cameras and such. And we actually uh, managed to get in there because we're the Amazon people. So who, who would doubt them? So we actually got um, access with a van all the way to the loading dock. And the loading dock was open. And I could have done whatever I wanted. I could have thrown packages in the van and drive away. Just complete access, guys. All right, UPS. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because we got to get ahead. But UPS service, same thing. You learn to schedule delivery. You get your uniform and the badge. In this, uh, in this example, we just gain access to a facility in the front desk computer. Uh, I only had a shirt and a hat, not even a badge. And the uh, front desk lady, she had her tower, the, de the desktop, the computer desktop, fit on the table uh, with the backside exposed. So what I did when she was doing, uh, she was preoccupied, because I asked her to check if we have any UPS pickups, I put a nice little USB drive in the back of her computer, which was a key logger. And now I have all her credentials, including her personal credentials, because she was kind enough to log into social media on her work computer. So don't do that too. If you're at work, don't go on your uh, private platform, social media accounts, eBay accounts, Amazon accounts, because if that system is compromised, not just the company's getting uh, hijacked, it's your personal information that gets hijacked as well. Super easy to make, guys. Uh, very effective. Moving on. Uh, all right, so this is just to summarize, and you see the FIU badge here. Don't worry, it's just an example. Didn't infiltrate FIU. But uh, ID badges, it's very important to remember, they're easy to forge. They're very easy to forge. Uh, they're commonly used by businesses, medical facilities, and academic institutions. So here we see FIU. We see an employee badge of Netflix. We see a Walmart employee badge. This is all public information. If you Google any company name followed by ID badge or employee badge, you'll find a million real badges with real employee names, their pictures, the whole thing. So from, from there, it's a very easy road to manipulate that and use it for sinister purposes. So they're super low cost to obtain a clone, like I said, and they're highly effective in gaining trust and obtaining access. Guys, if you, if for some reason, if you have a badge and a shirt, people don't doubt what you say, even if it doesn't make sense, okay? Uh, I recommend everybody look up a DEF CON social engineering talk uh, on YouTube. Look, look for a bunch of them, but you'll see people just walk in there. This one guy had a shirt that literally had a logo on it that says, your company's IT guide. And he walked into a, a business and they let him work on their computers. It's not even the right company. It said, your, com your, uh, your company's IT guy. Or one of them said, your computer guy. And people just, they see a logo, they see somebody who's confident and he has the uniform and charisma and they just let him work on their computer. It's unreal. Okay, so ways to protect yourself, uh, Pedro and other people that were asking about it. So um, interpersonal and also for an enterprise level. First of all, pay attention to the details. Okay, pay attention to everything. If it's an email, look at the sender, look at the address it's coming from, look at who was designated to, look at every little detail, the logos, the timestamps. Does it make sense? Does it follow a pattern? Do I usually get an email from this company at this specific time? Look at every little details. Uh, research all the facts. So everything you're given, cross-reference it. If I get a phone call from a company saying I'm so-and-so and I'm coming in for this work, I'm going to call the actual company. Why do I do that? Because there's free apps that you can download on your smartphone right now. They'll give you any caller ID that you want in this world. So you can pretend to be anybody, any company. Uh, be cautious of downloading from an untrusted source. I know a lot of people struggle with that because everybody likes their free stuff, their free games, their free books, whatever you guys download. But be very cautious when downloading from untrusted sources. You can have uh, malware attached to it. It can have really bad implications. Pretty straightforward. Uh, foreign affair offers are fake. So if you get an offer from a, a prince in Nigeria, promise to uh, wine you money uh, for in exchange for goods or anything like that, guess what? 
Yeah, there we go. Baby love. Guess what? Don't fall for that. A lot of people, especially a lot of my uh, older customers, they get all these requests for help, whether it's financial or sometimes it doesn't start as financial in order to build trust and they fall for it. And before you know it, this person is asking them for their social security number. They're asking for their address. They're asking for a credit card number. And these guys basically ju just now own you once, once they have that. So no foreign offers for help accepted. Uh, do not click on untrusted links. This is, I mean, guys, we are in a hackathon. We're all techie people, but please pass it on to your uh, neighbors, family, and friends. If the, the link comes from an untrusted source, do not click on it. All right. And then uh, reject uh, requests or offers for help. If somebody's uh, nice enough to help you, that's great. But just be mindful exactly of what they're doing and how to do, they're doing it. Because the easiest thing to do is for me to offer you help. And you're thinking, oh, this is a great guy. He's offering me help. But by doing that, I actually have access to your system, workstation, physical folders, packages, server room, anything like that. You know, it can be as easy as, uh, oh, can you hold the door for me? Sure, I'll hold the door for you. By me holding the door for you, I'm actually, you know, justifying me being there and getting access to the facility. Trojan horse, exactly right, Trojan horse. Um, guys, set your spam filters to high just to uh, minimize the chances of uh, phishing attempts. There's other tools that are being used. You can research those. We are, we are running out of time. So, uh, but just set your spam filters to high. It will minimize the risk of phishing attempts and bogus emails getting to you. Secure your devices. What do I mean by secure your devices? Passwords, hard passwords. Don't put one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Don't put um, things like password is password. Uh, Two-factor authentication. Use two-factor authentication. Got to secure all your devices. Use antivirus, good ones, not free ones. Uh, I would recommend Kaspersky. Uh, Nod32 is good. Uh, anti malware software, malware bytes, things like that. And the most importantly, you want to think first and act later. What does that mean when you're given a piece of information, whether it's email or in person? Think about what you're getting, where it's coming from. And then act. Don't act impulsively just because the person trying to rush you and saying, oh, this is urgent. or oh, this uh, requires your immediate attention or I'm the CEO of the company or whoever. We learn that, you know, people can pretend to be anything and anywhere. All right. So we'll end with an in inspiring quote. You could spend a fortune purchasing technology and services and your network infrastructure still remain vulnerable to old fashioned manipulation. And that is Kevin McNeil, one of the greatest hackers of all times. Meaning you can have millions of dollars in software and hardware and protection, but in the end of the day, what's going to fail is the human factor. And with that, I thank you guys very much. And I'll open this down to a short Q&A. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Oh, hey, Anton, good to see you here. Thanks for joining. It's a good general life advice as well. Absolutely, it is. Thank you, guys. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. All right. Thank you, Nathan. I want to thank Nathan for all the guidance and mentoring with this uh, and supporting us uh, in building our workshops. There have been some amazing workshops, honestly. I've attended the Python workshop yesterday and also the, um, the Linux hacking workshop. So thank you very much, guys. Yep. And with that, thank you, everybody, for coming to the workshop. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you around. I'm just going to address this quick question. How do I yeah. get to physical pen testing? Uh, like I said, for me, it was more uh, a combination of military background, physical security, federal security, and uh, 15 years of IT. I just like breaking things. I just like taking things apart and seeing how they work and put them back together. And if you translate it into the security world, this, this is exactly what it is. How can I get into this system, into this office, into this business? Um, if you identify the vulnerabilities, it's quite easy.
And if you follow the guidelines and the, and the uh, actual um, uh, presentation, you will be successful. Guys, one important uh, disclosure, do not do this on your own unless you have permission from the organization in, in writing that you can pen test it or you know find vulnerabilities. Because this is illegal, it's highly illegal. Don't do it unless you're authorized to do it, okay? So with that being said, I wanna thank everybody and let's be productive and have an awesome time. <laughs> thank you guys. See you.